Welcome to the jungle overview for the version 35.1.1 update, Monolith. Since the release of Monolith, the jungle has not changed much at all. However, most are confused when it comes to how they should proceed as they enter this compact area full of objectives for the picking. With the removal of harvesters, you would think a jungler's life got way less complex, right? But that's certainly not the case. The amber link now gives you the choice to farm your jungle more to actually increase your allies' cow point income. This allows junglers like Severog to get their team ahead, while also getting those crucial soul siphon stacks. Do note that only your minions in your jungle count toward your amber link. Minions in the opposing jungle will simply deny the opportunity for your opponent to fill his or her own link. Make sure to keep an eye on your own jungle though, because if they spot a full link, they will empty all of its contents. Now, buffs. First we have the green buff. The green buff is greatly underutilized in many ways. First off, the buff gives a shield to the person who slays it. The shield gets bigger with each player level. The shield will also return 15 damage back to any opponent that lands an auto attack on you. If that's not enough, when it expires or depletes, it will explode dealing a few hundred damage to all nearby enemies. This makes it essential for any jungler to quickly clear their jungle early. The other main use of this buff is to tower dive. Use the shield to absorb the initial damage, and then use the explosion to help increase your chances of actually picking up a kill. This is the best use of the buff in the mid game, but during the late game, it's often good to let your carry have the green buff in order to survive burst damage. Next comes the gold buff. As a jungler, you will tend to ignore this buff unless your carry and support require a assistance in taking it. It will grant a 20% bonus CP to the person who takes it, so it's almost always used on your carry. Make sure this and your green buff are protected, as the opponents will look to steal those often due to them being so crucial to getting ahead in Monolith. As we're on the topic of buffs, you will have to control the river buffs if you want to win a game on Monolith. These might seem insignificant, but they're actually game-changing when put to good use. First off, every river buff gives 175 mana over 5 seconds. This is incredible useful for both the jungler and the mid laner. Along with this, they provide a variety of effects such as speed, damage over time on auto attacks, extra damage on your abilities, and lastly, invisibility. We're going to start with speed. When you get this buff, you'll now have 25 seconds to get around the map faster than anyone else. Furthermore, you will be able to auto attack and still move at the same speed as the person running away. This is a huge benefit if you're a melee and need to chase someone. Next, we have black buff. This provides a damage over time effect when you attack an enemy. This is huge for taking the rat to camp, 1v1, or just cleaning the jungle faster. Even clearing wards is easier as just one auto attack will kill a ward when you have black buff. The red buff gives all your abilities 20% more damage. This is fantastic on Gaster's late game, but fighters use it well too. It can very easily win a team fight. Lastly, invisibility is pretty straightforward. This gives you the option to gank from areas you otherwise wouldn't be able to, as well as setting up potential for huge initiations of team fights that can completely change the tide of a game. Not only that, but you can see stealth wards around you when you're invisible, allowing your team to clear them out and establish dominance in the vision war. Lastly, the prime buff. This guy has not really changed except for a couple aspects. First, he now shoots a bit faster, making him a bit tougher to take. This is counteracted by the fact that lifesteal is now relevant though. A carry around 42 CP or more can actually solo the guy to give your whole team the buff, providing he is safe and you have vision control. The other major change is that Prime has been moved to one team's half of the map. Only slightly though, and to compensate, the opposing team gets an easier look into the Prime Pit from their jungle. This will allow a team to form a composition of heroes around the late game to abuse all Prime advantage. Now this may seem unfair, but to compensate with the Prime Pit being on one side, as well as the removal of the Black Buff, the Raptor Camp has been added. These spawn every 4 minutes, up to a cap of 3. Each one provides 1000 CXP to the killer, which is exactly one whole car point. These are situated on the other team's side of the map, allowing them stronger control. You will need a team composition to abuse this, such as Chimera who can slay them early as they're not easy to take down. To round it all off, as a jungler your last objective is to gank. There are many more paths to take to gank an opponent, the fog walls help reinforce that. You can appear on an opponent at any time, so make sure you clear the vision to help shroud your approaches to pick up more kills to get your laners further ahead. As always, teamwork is the key to victory and as the jungler, it's your job to get the early game ball rolling for the rest. For more detailed information on Monolith and the changes to come with it, be sure to check out the rest of the Carbon Monolith Crash Course. I've been Generation Hollow, and I'll see you next time.